The big advantages of the microscope are, first of all, the fact that it is very stable, which is very important when performing anastomoses. Since the microscope stand remains steady and therefore I can move around without any problem and without having a shaky image. Then the ability to zoom in and out, which allows me to adapt the zoom level to the procedure I am carrying out. And the focal length, of course, which helps me, whatever the distance and height of the table, adapt accordingly and obtain a clear image. Whereas when you have glasses, you have to adapt to the whole table or stoop, which can be painful for the surgeon, especially when the operation lasts a long time. So, of course, the zoom and focus are two very important parameters when using the microscope. It is possible, and this is the advantage compared to glasses, to adjust the microscope to your vision and zoom in and out extremely easily, using the foot pedal, which means you do not have to let go of your surgical instruments, and can continue the procedure. I'm thinking in particular about the use of the zoom when you pass the stitches, when you tie them, you always tend to zoom in a little bit more when you do the stitch. And then when you're going to tie the stitch, it's true that the thread is often relatively long. You need to take a step back to easily find your thread. Anything that will make the operation smoother will make you feel better and allow you to perform the anastomosis in the best conditions. There are two different concepts. The first is simply whether or not the flap is really vascularized. That is, whether or not there is a blood supply to the flap, and if the blood is leaving the flap correctly. That's really the primary goal of the procedure. The second one is which part of the flap is well vascularized. We are able to see based on the skin paddle which area is well vascularized and which area is not, in order to remove the part that we know will generate secondary fat necrosis. That is to say, areas that will not survive the microsurgery. We realize that one of the other advantages of fluorescence is when performing a mastectomy. We sometimes have to get very close to the dermis of the breast skin, which is fragile, especially when there is a history of radiotherapy, which in fact is quite common. And so, since tissue is brought in, it is a shame to remove or de-epidermize the flap that is brought in only to finally realize that part of the breast skin will become necrotic because of the surgery. We take advantage of the fluorescence when there is an indication for immediate breast reconstruction, to look at the breast skin and check that, after the mastectomy, the skin is of a sufficient quality, let's say, to allow reconstruction, or if it is better to keep a larger skin palette, or maybe remove part of the skin from the mastectomy from the outset, to avoid secondary complications with a phenomenon of secondary breast skin necrosis where we find ourselves in a situation where we had skin, we brought it in, and then we de-epidermized it, we buried it, which we wouldn't have done if we'd have known that the skin would be necrotic in the post-operative uh, period. <laughs>